Welcome to HP Tuner's Ford Mod Motor Training Part 12. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with our open loop calibration techniques for the mass airflow curve. Last video we looked at our closed loop calibration using our short and long term fuel trims and using a histogram and populating out and transferring the data into our MAF curve to tune it. Now we need to go and focus our attention into the higher load areas within our MAF curve, the higher voltage areas in our MAF curve. We can take our log data from our wideband, compare it against what the command EQ or the lambda is going to be, find the difference, which is known as an EQ ratio error, and plot that as a difference in a histogram, and then transfer the data back to our MAF curve to constantly refine and tune the mass airflow process. Without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at dialing in our mass airflow calibration curve at higher load and higher throttle angles. This is going to be what's known as our open loop operation, where we no longer look at our primary oxygen sensors and having that feedback as we found in the last video doing our closed loop tuning calibration technique. Um, in this case, we'll be an open loop. We don't have our fuel trims, so we have to rely on a wideband registration and reading in order to dial in our mass airflow curve. So we're going to be looking at our separate histogram for open loop style calibrating. We need to have a wideband fitted onto our vehicle. In fact, I have that on this particular Mustang that I'm sitting in right now. It has an AM wideband gauge. That wideband has to be wired into our ProLink cable so we can log the proper voltage and put a proper transfer in order to turn the voltage into lambda reading that we can log and work with within our VCM scanner. We're going to look at how to do that later in this video, but let's first go in and talk about the key things that we need to know in order to transition to open loop properly. Now, you want to make sure that, especially on a force induction engine, you're not going to be transitioning into boost, so going from vacuum into boost, and we're still at 1.0 lambda. That's going to be too lean. We need to make sure we richen up our mixture. We need to go and definitely have a, a substantially richer mixture so that we can make proper power, make it safely, and make sure that everything is going to be dialed in as needed. So let's go in here and open up a calibration file so we can start to take a look at the key areas and key things that we need to go our set up right in our calibration to make sure it transitions into open loop properly. So we're going to go here to file open. Now we have our multiple different files here. These files are from uh, the, the V6 Mustang folder here. The last video we created file one, two, and three. That was when we were going in and doing the mass airflow calibration process for closed loop. So looking at our short and long term trims. So I'm going to be starting off with a base calibration file three in this video here. And then we're going to move into engine. And then we're going to go here from general. And then we can go in here to our fuel side of things. Now in fuel, we need to go and move into oxygen sensors. Now within the oxygen sensor window here, we need to make sure we have a few things set up right. The first thing we need to consider here under oxygen sensors is that when we're transitioning into full throttle conditions, that our long-term fuel trim is no longer going to be carrying through and transitioning into, into these open loop uh, style calculations. We need to make sure that's going to be essentially bypassing and uh, not working. So what we need to do is go down here under oxygen sensor tab and move down here into learning max TPS. Right now this is set at 49%. You'll probably find on a stock file it's going to be at 100%. At 100% learning on the max TPS, that'll mean that the long-term trims can apply into full throttle conditions. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure when we're at full throttle we have no influence from short or long-term fuel trims in our fuel delivery under high load situations. Because if we carry some kind of a fuel error from our part throttle conditions and we go into full throttle, that might be enriching or leaning out our mixture too much in our long-term fuel trim, which we don't want to have happen. So we want to go here, in this case, learning max TPS. I'm going to go make sure I set this to at least 50. You might even set it lower at something like 35 or 40 percent to guarantee that your long-term fuel trim, again, isn't going to be able to apply and carry through into your high load full throttle situations. The next thing we need to do is jump in here to our open loop base. Now in open loop base, we're going to find here that we have a section called open loop. Now we have open loop delay. We need to make sure this table is all zeroed out. When we're going into our full throttle conditions, we need to make sure that it's going to transition from closed loop into open loop as we'd expect. Some calibration files, as you're going and reading them stock, will have our open loop delay or have some of these delays set here. What that's going to do is have a timer and it's going to have to wait till it exceeds a certain amount of time, it might be a second or two seconds, before it's allowed to transition from closed loop at stoichiometric target of 1.0 into open loop of whatever you're commanding in your base fuel table. So it's very important that in a force induction engine that we're dealing with right now, we have a supercharged V6 Mustang here, that we're going to be transitioning almost immediately or instantaneously once we exceed the conditions that we're going to be programming, as we're going to find here an open loop fuel TPS threshold We'll talk about that here in just one second. So this table has to be zeroed out so we have no delay 
and switching from close to open loop. Because if we're, we're in the conditions to meet open loop, we want it to richen up our mixture and or potentially richen up our mixture depending on what our fuel-based commands here and that we're going to run the engine safely. So that's gonna be one factor right here. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.